Hey, what's up guys? This is Lexus Overland. I am going to make a video today about my four wheel tire inflator, that green thing right there, and some modifications that I've done to my max track compressor. So follow along as I show you what I did. First, we will talk about the max track compressor. So this thing is a Haas. It is a 300 liter per minute compressor with a list price of $114 at Napa. Now, to compare the ARB single compressor, this dirty thing right here, is $300 and has a liter per minute of, what did I write down? 87. So right off the bat, we are almost four times as fast with this bad boy. And the ARB dual is 174 liters per minute. So this is almost twice as fast, but the ARB dual compressor is $600. So for one sixth of the cost, you get twice the speed. So this thing is a beast and frequently Napa has sales. So you can get this for like under a hundred bucks. Like right now they have a $20 off orders over 75 bucks. And if you're a rewards member, you get deals like all the time to your text messages. Um, so it's not the greatest in terms of quality, but I can go through six of these before buying one ARB compressor. And before everybody says, oh, but if it breaks, you'll be stuck with air down tires. I still have that thing. So that will always work. And this is hard mounted. I, uh, for all you 100 series guys, I just used these two bolts and mounted it. So it was like a cheap, uh, mount works with AHC, which is awesome. So yeah, let's get into the modifications that I've done to this. So out of the box, this does not look like that. These are the modifications that I've done. It comes with this jank hose that's threaded in. That comes with also a non-standard air fitting. So it is not like this or wherever the female is this thing it doesn't look like that so i couldn't just plug in my arb line so that was annoying because the included airline was nice had a gauge but the gauge was inaccurate and it was a straighter valve so i'd have to go over to my tires unscrew it screw it on turn on the compressor wait in whatever amount of time and then turn the compressor off check the pressure which was usually wrong so I'd have to unscrew it with unscrew the, the Napa one and then use my ARB digital inflator to check the pressure and so on and so forth until I reach my desired pressure. So my first modification was to just cut off the terrible air fitting and add a universal one. But this did not come out the box with a pressure cutoff switch. So what that meant was Every time I release this handle, this thing would just run until either the line blew up or it blew up. So airing up was very annoying because I had to very quickly, to, like I would have to release this, check the pressure, and then very quickly press it again or turn it off. So that was a problem. Here's the solution. So there's a gentleman on Instagram and YouTube named Kevin. I will link his Instagram and YouTube in the description below. He showed us all how to modify this to include a pressure switch. So thank you, Kevin, for doing the research and allowing me to kind of steal your idea for my first YouTube video. But what he did, there's a, uh, you can take this plastic housing off. The control board is in here. And there's a red wire that goes from the switch to the circuit board. You snip that, you add two longer wires to it, splice those into this pressure switch, and you get a one quarter inch NPT. This is like a one and a half inch nipple. Um, doesn't look like the nipples that I'm used to, but you thread that in there, you get a three way one quarter inch uh, NPT T, and then on one end you add the pressure switch, and on the other you add the lovely universal air fitting. So now it solves my problems of not having a pressure switch and having a lame air fitting. So now I can add or I can plug in whatever I wanted and it works and it's great. 
but I wanted it to be faster. And that's where this comes into play. So the same guy, Kevin, <laughs> thank you, Kevin. He did a bunch of research with different hoses, different parts, all sorts of stuff. He kind of wanted to stay away from this Flexilla line because sometimes you just pay for the name. But after testing multiple types of hoses, he realized this really is the best. So it doesn't have like much of a memory. It's very flexible. It's very durable. So it's kind of the perfect hose for this kind of setup. All right, so here's one of the problems that I'm just now learning on my first YouTube video about recording long <laughs> videos about things. If you forget something, you can't like easily fix it. So one thing that I did forget is this is a uh, quarter inch and this is half inch. No, this is, this is one eighth. See, that's the problem. That is not quarter inch. <laughs> this is, this is one eighth. Uh, as you can see, here's another quarter inch. It just goes right in. So I'm just not going to like refilm that because it's kind of who I am. I'm, I'm authentic. If if I mess up, you get to see it. So the the included hole or the <laughs> the threaded hole from the factory on the Napa compressor is an eighth inch NPT. So this is an eighth inch, one and a half inch nipple. And then you need what's called a bushing. So this has a female eighth inch and expands it to a male quarter inch. Right? Yeah. So that allows the nipple to kind of convert to quarter inch from eighth inch so that's how you connect these and that's how that works now we'll move on to the pieces needed to make that let's check out some of the tools that i used in this build so for tightening the air fittings i used an assortment of adjustable wrenches with painters tape to protect surface because i just like things to look nice nice and sharp razor blade to cut the hose some teflon tape and then I really, really like these for wiring. It's these like uh, heat shrink solder things. So you just pick the appropriate gauge, push the wires together, put a heat gun on it. It heat shrinks and solders them all at once. And this little thing is my, um, if I can open it, wire stripper. It's got these jaws. You just put the wire in there, set the uh, length of strip, and then ka-chunk it and it's done. This thing is awesome for crimping because I needed to crimp some spade connectors on there. So you just uh, pick which color based on the size and squeeze until it's done and you're done. And then obviously some dikes. All right, so the point of a four tire inflation system is that I can hook this up to all four of my tires at once. The pressure equalizes in the system and I can air them all up at the same time, at the same rate. So instead of having to plug into one tire, waiting for that to air up, unplugging, going to the next tire, waiting for that to air up, so on and so forth until all four are good, I can chunk all these on to all four at once, plug this bad boy into my compressor, and then turn the compressor on, open up this valve, and then just wait. Um, so that's great. It also serves as a four-tire deflator. Same principle, but instead of adding air, I'm removing air. So I just leave this unplugged and open up the valve and air escapes. Check it regularly. <clears throat> it's not as fast as like a, one of these bad boys, the ARB quick deflator, because which I won't get that out, but it removes the um, valve in the air thing on your tire allows air to escape faster so it's not as fast but again you're not having to go between all four tires over and over and over again well four times but <laughs> yeah this just saves a lot of time so in terms of components the first thing and arguably the most important is the air chuck like for your tire so you need four of these obviously because you have four tires and these just clip on very nicely this thing holds it in place so you can stick it on there and it doesn't fall off what's important when purchasing these is to make sure that they are closed because if you if they were open when i remove it from the tire and release it would just let air out so when i remove it from the first tire that tire is now a closed system 
but the remaining four are now open and air is just releasing. So you need to make sure that you get these in a closed form. And I'll link these in the description below. And the second component that you will need is a hose barb so that you can connect things to your air hose. So this is a quarter inch inner diameter hose. And these are quarter inch NPT fittings across the board. So you'll need quarter inch NPT, quarter inch barb. The barbs that I chose that Kevin chose are very sharp. Not like they'll cut you sharp, but if you push the hose in, it's not coming off, which is good because you don't want that to happen. The third thing that you will need is some sort of a hose clamp. Now the traditional screw style clamps, these things, they're decent, but they don't really apply a uniform uh, fo like force around or a pressure around from what I've heard. So not super ideal. Also, if you tighten these too much, they'll like cut into the hose and they can loosen. So just not ideal. These bad boys are single ear hose clamp pinch clamps. And they're awesome. This kit is great. It's on Amazon for pretty cheap. It's like 20 bucks. Has a variety of diameters. Pick the one that you need. And you take this once you get it on there. And you just put it on and squeeze. And when you squeeze, it pinches it, cinches it up tight, and then it doesn't release. So this is a pretty sweet hose clamp. To remove these, you can put a screwdriver in there and like pry it. You can cut it. You can use that to cut it, whatever you want to do. But I really like it, quick, easy, and I had zero leaks on the first try. So it works. All right, and up next, you will need to build your manifold. So to do that, you'll need an air gauge. You can go with a battery one that lights up and is pretty, but this one will never not tell me what the pressure is unless it's broken. It doesn't have any batteries. And you'll need a four-way quarter-inch NPT manifold, I guess you could call it, T. Two more of these barbs that convert or that connect the hose to that manifold. You'll need a valve and obviously the hose. And then to connect to your compressor, this is a quarter inch barb to quarter inch NPT female. <clears throat> and this is just your typical, typical standard air chuck that you plug into that. So that's how you get air into the system. This is how you decide if the air is going into the system or out, depending on what you're doing. And uh, the way that you assemble it is pretty straightforward. So obviously you have all this. And then you have the two lines that go to this each side of the vehicle. And then as you approach the front tire, you have a T. So air from the manifold tees off up to the tire and then also continues to the rear. And you just repeat that on both sides and voila, you're done. Okay, so I have connected it to all four tires. As you can see, I'm at 34 PSI. What I did is I wanted to be able to set this up here so that I could see it not have to bend down, so I extended out this length to be able to connect to the compressor. And, as you can see, hooked up to each tire. Now one thing to keep in mind when you are going around plugging this in is to keep the valve closed because as soon as I plug in to the tire, if this is open, it's gonna let air out. So make sure that when you're plugging it in, the valve is closed. And uh, let's see how nice and easy it is to plug in without it leaking or anything. My air bee inflator, for some reason I have to like screw it onto the chuck a little bit to get it tight. But these, it's very, well of course, have a little bit of difficulty on the camera. I'm a little camera shy, but uh, I mean, it's just that easy. And then it's done. So let's get into uh, deflating and inflating. So... Here's how you deflate. And then we wait. Like I said earlier, it's not that fast. I don't know. Maybe one PSI every five seconds, ten seconds. Don't really know. Didn't time it. But where this system is a total champ is how quickly it inflates. Check this out. Let me get it plugged in. So I cannot do that one-handed. All right. Negative to negative, positive to positive. I'm not going to turn the truck on because I'm not going to run this very long. But right now, valve is closed. It's plugged in. 
So check this out. Here's the action of the pressure cutoff switch. <laughs> Boom. The system has hit 120 PSI, so it shut off. And then when I open up the valve, it turns back on. And it inflates. And it cuts off. So check it out. So this has been my overview of my four-wheel tire inflation build. Napa air compressor modification. Uh, in summary, this thing kicks ass. Uh, yesterday, I timed it. I have 285, ignore my messy garage, 285, 75, 16 mud terrains. Not that the type of tire dictates the size, but 32.8, 33s, whatever. I aired up from 15 to 35 PSI in three minutes. Yes, three minutes. That thing takes like four minutes a tire. So I'm going much, much faster. Some would say four times as fast. So I'm very happy with this. I'm really not that much money into it. Significantly less than like the whatever ones that you buy, you know. But uh, do it. I'm going to link Kevin's videos in here because he did all of the work. So shout out to Kevin. Thank you so much. Hopefully you don't mind that I made a YouTube video about this. But uh, yeah, I'll give you credit for it. If you all have any questions, just let me know. Peace.